It is time to build some mechanical assault skeleton suits. Or MSs, as I like to call them. Hello everyone and welcome to Mass Builder, a Kickstarter game that entered early access just recently. There was a demo out on Steam for a while, but now they are actually... Um, I guess we could call it selling the game? I decided to pitch in because... I think that this game has potential to go fun places. It's just that they are a small development team and they need like another two years or so before this game is actually properly playable. But hey, they won't have the time to finish the game unless someone's paying their salaries. And hey, it's 20 bucks. I had some spare change. So, what is MASS Builder about? Uh, you are the... Well, partnering in leading a PMC, and that PMC uses giant robots to fight the evil invading quarks. Yes, the evil monsters are called quarks. Physics jokes abound here. And the main selling point of this game is that... You get to build your masses. They're off the name Mass Builder. Here's one I built earlier, just so that we had something to look at. Now, right now there aren't that many armor pieces available, and also since the availability of all parts is locked to game progress, I can't actually show everything off yet. But suffice to say that it gets reasonably in-depth in terms of making your little M-A-S-S -S look exactly the way you want it to. You can as assemble all these parts individually or you can ask the game to randomly pick from parts you have available to you and you can also paint everything. Which is sort of great, including the internal joint system. You can also change the color of your eye flare, which is very important. And since this is an Unreal 4 engine game, you can also enjoy the glowing colors supported by the engine so that you go completely blind while trying to play the game. But let's not do that. Now I'm basically in the midst of trying to unlock more cool stuff. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to progress the story for now because I honestly have no interest in progressing the story because it is... I want to believe it's placeholder and it is so painfully low budget anime that it hurts. It hurts a lot. So. Instead, let's just pop into one of the grinding missions, yeah! There are story missions and then there are hunting grounds. Story missions are, as you might imagine, delivered to you one at a time and you have specific objectives and they kinda sorta advance a the very simple story. And then we have the hunting grounds where you just grind enemies for cash, parts, and materials that you need to further upgrade your systems. So before we go into the whole mass building, let's actually take a look what fighting in this game looks like. Because it's not great, suffice to say. I have some criticism for this game. <laughs> There's Reyna, our PMC partner, who is a terrible stereotype. I try to ignore her, she has never said anything of import. Let's see, what equipment are we bringing? Oh dear. 
we are apparently bringing the starter equipment. It has reset all the weapons for this particular mass. That's going to make this level super difficult. But whatever. It'll work out. Now, this plays exactly like it looks. It is a third person hack and slash game, essentially, where you try to preserve ammo whenever possible, because your ammo is actually quite limited. Also, enemies take a million years to die, which is something the devs have adjusted twice. In the first available demo, th these small enemies were not actually in the game. Only the larger alpha type were in. And they have about four times the health of the small ones. Which meant that when you started the game and you didn't have any equipment, it took like ten minutes to clear a single com combat encounter. Now thankfully I have upgraded this thing a bit, so that we are doing almost twice as much damage as you do at the start of the game, which makes it a little less painful, but as you can tell, it still takes a while to deal with even the basic enemy types. Thankfully we have missiles. Good thing about missiles, hard knockdown, and then you just slap them a lot. And any time an enemy tries to strike you, you press shift to boost the hell out of there, because there is no way to block in this game. The enemies can block, the enemies also have iframes. You can't block, you do not have iframes. Even when you are using the boost to get away, you have zero iframes, which means that if you happen to boost into an attack or past an enemy, they will smack you. This combined with the fact that the game has an automatic lock-on on by default means that most people will start the first level and immediately get smacked like 15 times. Which isn't great. Now those who have been paying attention have noticed that there are two small little drones flying around helping me out. That is one of the available weapon types. And since we're just running around in circles shooting these guys anyway, I might as well go over them. You have melee weapons, you have physical projectile weapons, you have energy projectile weapons, you have missile weapons, which are called bullet weapons, interestingly enough. And then you have your drones. Each of these can be customized, modified and changed the appearance of, and you design them yourself. There are no preset weapons in the game apart from the ones that you start with, which are essentially just a preset design for you to start off with until you figure out how to make ones of your own. So once we're done with that this level, I think that that's our next step, that we're going to have to design some weapons for this thing, because the starter weapons are really boring. They're also all named Untitled. They're not even Untitled, they are Untitled. Right, that's the first wave done. <laughs> Now we just need to clear out two more. And in these next ones we will have higher tier enemies spawning. Hooray! <laughs> For melee enemies, just use the missile to get some hard knockdown and then smack them. It is essentially the only way to deal with them without <laughs> taking damage, because since you have no iframes and no way to block, being anywhere near a group of enemies means that you will take damage. <laughs> Brilliant design. Still, the game is very much under development. This is version 0.1.2 after all.
I'm varying which weapon I'm using here back for since you don't have much in the way of ammo and you have to rely on enemy drops to get more. Which means that don't use the good weapon until it runs out, because then you're going to have to grind down the enemies with whatever crap you're carrying as your backup, which can take a while. Ah, and here's a Cerberus enemy. These guys are one of the first mid-bosses you end up encountering, and their big deal is essentially that they take a lot of damage. <laughs> I wish I could say that they are super interesting and... Uh, demand new tactics, but they really don't. They just have fire breath for some reason. I don't think you can go to space battle grapple since as the story goes the quarks have invaded earth and you were raised in a shelter. We are basically still working on Securing the wilderness of Earth and trying to rebuild our industrial base. An interesting thing in here that you might notice that that the energy weapon does not have magazines per se, but regenerating energy from a set amount that you're carrying, which means that if you run out of ammo in the magazine, so to speak. You can't reload, you just have to wait until it regenerates enough ammo for you to fire. Which, depending on how big a weapon you made, can take a while. Thankfully, we did pick up some ammo for my other gun at some point. In that pile of dead enemies. Ah, there we go. Delicious. I don't think there is a pig weapon, Tarla. I mean, I can't say for sure, because I haven't unlocked all the weapons yet, but... I doubt it. If we happen to find a pig weapon, I will most certainly put it into use, I guarantee you. I apologize for the rapid shoulder switching when I move in and fire in the aim mode, but that's because the moment you strafe, the camera switches to the opposite shoulder to give you more room to see. The only problem is that if you're moving like this, the game gets a bit disorienting quite quickly. <laughs> There we go, buddy. Well, that's actually a good name. I'm gonna build an energy weapon once we get back to base and name it the Proton Ignition Gun. Then we can use the pig. Alright. That worked. Let's get this last guy who's hiding over here. There is no real explanation as to why these quark dudes look so different and can do such varied things, because they're supposed to be biological creatures, but they're apparently made out of various kinds of nanometals. And they're clearly intelligent, but they show no sign of tactics or cooperation. The story hasn't really expanded too much on what their deal is yet. But they do have one very annoying ability. When they're spawning, they are invulnerable for three seconds. So don't waste ammo on those guys who are coming out of the ground, because you will do zero damage.
Yes, they are G79 GM jogging in the desert, being chased by angry quarks. Something happened over here. The hell? <laughs> Something just exploded over here. I have no idea what that was. Ah, fresh energy packs. Delicious. It means that we can beam gun more. And if you're getting tired of hearing my mouse clicking in the background, I'm sorry, but, but most of the weapons are single shots, which means that you need to click individually each time you want to fire. Did I mention that this game has some issues? <laughs> I can understand why they decided to put it in early access, because, I mean, it is playable, and there is a lot of content to unlock. And everyone was whining and screaming that they wanted to play the game now, 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 now. But... This is very much a case of this one should have stayed in the oven for another six months or so. Still, I'm having fun. Also, when fighting these guys, use terrain to your advantage. Both the AI and your own mass are not particularly good at figuring out that your projectiles will hit ground. So, by positioning yourself on the other side of a hill, for example, this guy will waste all of his projectiles into the sand dunes and just do no damage. It's pretty great. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not doing any cool special moves with a melee weapon, it's because there aren't any. Right now, there are only basic combos for each weapon. Ah yes, very wisely done. You teleported closer to me so that I could shoot you better. Not very smart, are you? Nor are my targeting systems, because I tried to target that guy and it tried to lock on this guy instead. Now, you might think that these teleporting guys are super annoying and hard to keep track of. Not so, for two reasons. First of all, they generally teleport to very nearby. And also, if you target them and fire a missile, the missiles will keep homing onto them after the teleport. So your missiles will literally just make a 180 degree turn and chase an invisible enemy because they know where he's going to show up. A large part of this game is essentially realizing that your missiles are your best friends. Because they have a hard knockdown on most minor enemies and soft knockdown on larger enemies. And you fire them by just pressing a button. It is essentially the press G to grenade of Call of Duty, only that in this game you press E and then you fire 12 missiles that do area of effect damage and can completely destroy entire squads of enemies. Make use of them, because they're good. Well, we are almost done. <laughs> Pleased to be of dying. Mission clear. Hooray! 
Hey, I got some retro style Gatling parts. That means that I might actually have enough parts to finish that thing. Right, now we also have to stand around and wait for the mission end timer to tick down. There is no way to manually end the mission, so uh, enjoy your 25 seconds of your standing here, I guess. I'm not complaining because <laughs> you sometimes you need to run around the arena to pick up all the dropped loot. So I'm glad to have those 25 seconds, but I would have liked a like proceed button. That would have been a bit of a, you know, quality of life thing. Let's see, we have unlocked the pinpoint launcher and the Titan O2 skirt and the assault arm. All right. Yeah, and the retro style Gatling. Nice. Oh, we completed a combat scythe as well. And the Morning Star. Yeah. Nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Let's go into the weapons menu. And we have a lot of markers showing. Hey, you can get a crap ton of new stuff. Yes, I know. Right, so, quick rundown on how weapon customization works in this game. First, you need to choose a grip. Something to hold on to. There are various kinds. You can make punchy things, you can make big swingy things, you can make swords and sabers and all kinds of stuff. I also like that the twin grip is a one-handed weapon. Because, you know, why not? And of course we have the Battle Fist. So this is where there's, it's time for audience participation. What sort of weapon should we make? Because the basic sword is dreadful. Now, the thing about weapons is that you can see up here to the left that we have sockets. The zero is the grip and that just decides how many actual weapon parts we can attach. For example, the combat grip, as you can see up here, has only a single weapon socket, but the twin grip has two. So if we do like so, we can put another sword on there. Double sword! That's stupid. really need to unlock this morning store though. Oh wow, the morning store is 70 tons. <laughs> nice. What the hell is this thing made out of? There we go. The perfect weapon. <laughs> Just a morning star in each hand so that we can pummel the enemies. Lovely. And of course we can paint it. So we can make it gold. And then we can make the spikes a bright pink. Don't think can't even tell where that last sub element is, but no. Oh well. Actually, that's an interesting idea, Total. Let's try that. If we go with a twin grip, then we put double morning stars. This is the perfect weapon. I have no idea how this will even work, actually. I think that our mass will probably just flail it. Well, let's equip that for now. 
actually, I don't know, yeah, they might actually be a decent throwing weapon. <laughs> but I don't think it comes back as a boomerang. No, no, I'm pretty sure that. I mean, this thing weighs 143.8 tons. If you throw this thing, it'll probably get like 15 feet and then it will crash into the ground and start sinking. But that's fine. Let's make a bullet shooter. Now I have a few parts like these and really all the, that ma the changes here is whether it's a one-handed or two-handed weapon. Let's see, I have unlocked a shielded trigger. Let's build that. I have no idea what it looks like. Oh yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> this I like. And we just unlocked the retro-styled Gatling, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah. That's a big ass gun. <laughs> 128 tons of gun. Unfortunately, I have no accessory parts yet. I think that that's not even in the game yet. I also haven't unlocked the flame bullets either. Right, so let's put a mark on this thing so that people know that it's dangerous. Let's see here. Caution, caution. Warning, high temperature area. Warning, radioactive material. Yeah, there you go. This is the PIG. Right, now see, the silly thing is that you have to manually place these things. By going into adjust and then you left click where you want it. Let's see if we can actually get it to show up. Oi. Right, let's see here. That clearly isn't working. Maybe we need to find a better position. Let's see here. We we'll probably want to put it here, actually, on the main body of the weapon. And yes, this is a very slow process. This was not made to be particularly quick or precise, but it is very much a placeholder system, so I'm not going to complain more than necessary. And here we go. The pig. Unfortunately, I don't think there is a pig decal. Probably not even anything remotely resembling a pig. A boar, maybe, we might have if we're lucky, but... No, got rhinos and snakes. And bears and foxes and deer. But no pigs! Huh. Right, suggestion is that we paint it pink. Let's take a look here. Which pink do we want? We want gloss pink. Gloss pink seems like a nice pig color. That looks nice, actually. I suppose that the magazine can be a different color. Quick 
Request a switch caller. Purple is the suggestion, all right. There you go. Let me pop up to the gun itself. Right, next up, let's take a look at our energy shooter, which has the energy damage pro property, believe it or not. So now we need to figure out what sort of trigger we want. I actually only have the one-handed or two-handed beam rifle, so we're probably going to have to start with the basic one. Uh, not that I know, buddy, but I think that the color of the projectile is preset, unfortunately. Let's see here. I have the kinetic buster, I have the energy rifle buster, and I have the focus buster. No, that's right. We have unlocked the precision buster. Now, a lot of these little icons here that are supposed to explain how the weapon works makes sense. I mean, one shot, okay, I get it. Auto, I get it. Motion, I think it means that it has better target tracking, but I'm not sure. And if you're wondering how much damage a weapon does, screw you, because the weapon damage is entirely decided by the stats of your operating system and mass frame and then modified by weapon type. So you can't actually tell how much damage a weapon will do when you're designing it. Can you tell by the tone in my voice that I sort of dislike that design choice? <laughs> I mean, sure, it's fun to make things, but you also have no clue how good your weapon is until you jump into a stage and it turns out oh no you have made a fully automatic plasma rifle that does 10 damage and basic enemies have 3000 hit points <laughs> because you don't get more ammo either <laughs> you just have a weaker weapon perfect right let's give this one a nice paint job because it can look like this So for our cool energy weapon, what do you think? Shall we go retro, perhaps? A warm orange and red, you say? Looks like an FPS flamethrower. <laughs> Alright, what do we name this one? 
our new cool weapon prototype. Because Energy Shooter 01 doesn't really have a nice ring to it. The end shoot type 2. Because it's the second one. Alright, next let's take a look at our bullet launchers. There are only two variants, really. You have the many small missiles and you have the big missiles, which are called nukes in-game. I strongly doubt they are actually nuclear weapons, but you know, I'm just saying... Uh, But basically the top row are multi-fire, which is better for large groups of enemies, and then we have the nuke ones, which do a lot of damage to single targets, or whoever happens to be inside the area of effect. So what do you think? Do we want swarm missiles, or do we want nukes? Warm action it is. So do we want a box, a line, or three small boxes lined together? They all fire a maximum total of 12 missiles regardless of design. It's just how big your shoulders are, really. Unfortunately, you can't put them on the legs and make them like those nice Zakatoom launchers. Triple box it is, alright. And then for the weapon sockets, we need to choose a projectile. And you have flathead missiles and warhead missiles. They are exactly the same. And I also haven't unlocked the warhead missile yet. It is only 75% developed. I haven't found the final drop for it. But thankfully it doesn't matter. At all. So let's just paint this thing. <laughs> what color do we want the missile heads to be? Red, so that they go faster of course. Then we have the box itself. What color should the box be? Desert camo, alright, let me just roll down to the camos. There you go. Nice. So what do we call this one? I must say I'm really looking forward... Oh, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Unfortunately it needs to be at least six characters. So let's call it the Paul Missile. There we go. Now we unlocked something for our energy launchers as well. Which are just... I mean they're fin funnels. Let's be perfectly fair here. They are fin funnels. Uh, and you basically just pick what you want them to look like. Doesn't change the performance at all, really. Just that the starting one is really boring, and then you get a cool one that spins. And that one has a motion, so I guess it's better. 
it is also the only one that has that. So it's apparently just objectively better than all the others. I guess. But it's up to you if you want the fly, the falcon, or the drake. Because I don't have any of the others yet, unfortunately. Go with the Drake for now. Spin a bit is cooler. Then it's like, oh yeah, you can have dual claw launcher, spark launcher, pinpoint launcher, ray stream launcher, and I also unlocked the EN Force focus launcher. They all fire the exact same projectile. Oh hey, the EN Force focus launcher is also spin a bit. We can have two spin a bits. What an amazing waste of electricity to keep these two things spinning. Perfect. The question is what color we should be going for these ones. The yoke option, of course, is to go for orange radiance, so that everyone's eyes bleed whenever it's on screen, which will be always, more or less. Pink radiance. That thing looks illegal. I actually think they look sort of neat in the dark green camo. Let's see here. Like so, and then we can make the the bit where the pew pew goes out to gold. There you go. I think we've done a really good job so far because nothing corresponds to anything color wise, which is perfect. It's going to be complete madness. Alright, so while we're modding up a bit, let's pop into our machine and see did we unlock anything? We unlocked a new side skirt and a new back skirt. Wow, interesting, I don't care. Right. We did, however, get some materials, so let's pop into the development menu and see if we can actually upgrade any of our stuff. Odds are no, because everything is super expensive in this game. They really want you to grind a lot in this one. And one of the unfortunate fact is that the siege frame line has the highest damage output of everything just period if you go down this line you will do almost twice as much damage by the end as any other other combination so that's the one i started with because you do not do enough damage in this game <laughs> Let's see, ooh, Tempo Preserver 2, actually. That's nice. To give you a better understanding of how this works, we should probably pop into the tuning screen to explain it. Basically, you have an engine slot, an operating system slot, and an architect slot. And you grab one of these, 
slap this baby in here. They have a certain number of slots that you can fill with the smaller upgrades, for example, metal plating, heat turbines, even more metal plating because armor is good. And just generally make yourself better. Now, the standard frame has a basic damage bonus of 100. The siege mech frame gets plus 300 to everything at level 1. It maxes out at several thousand bonus damage. This is why everyone online is using this thing. I also unlocked the enemy observer unit in my foolishness thinking that I would actually be allowed to see the enemy's damage property weakness. But that's apparently not yet in the game. So it does nothing. But it's good to have. For the future. Now sure this is not armored core 5. <laughs> you are sort of limited in how much you can actually mod things since it's a preset upgrade tree but you can focus on things at least so you know what sort of M-A-S-S you're actually putting together. Now we can finally pop into the armor screen and see if we can modify this guy a bit. My favorite thing is that there's a random button. So you can just slap this and go, go, and you get this cool thing. Yeah, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's got pectus carnatum and giant wings. I guess he's a, pi he's a pigeon. We have big shoulder man, small shoulder man, wing man with big head. <laughs> Slap that random button until we get something that looks stupid enough to put in the field. Really, many of the minor parts don't really, I mean, you barely pay attention to them when you're playing. So, the most important parts are the head, naturally. I do like that you can get the one that has no eyes at all. <laughs> Just main camera only, baby. And there is a mono eye, but I haven't unlocked it yet. There are some visor faces as well, but I haven't unlocked those either, because I haven't yet reached the level in the game where those parts drop, so, you know. Then you can put horns on, or things. And yes, Dirkus, the uh, original design I had when the, I made this prototype before the stream was essentially just a first generation GM because why not? Let's see, we unlocked the Titan 002 recently. Let's take a look at that thing. That is a silly head. Let's go with that. Let's see what the lower head that is supposed to match with this thing looks like. Oh, it just gives him ears. <laughs> Unfortunately, you cannot build a ball, really. Alright. Next up, let's pick a neck. This is the one I have the most fun with, because you can barely tell the difference. Especially when you're playing, because you will never actually see your neck while you're playing. <laughs> but it's there, which is nice. A 
Wow, this one was super pointy. <laughs> what is the point of that? Is a body slamming the enemy? And then we have... Oh, it's just, it's just a Gundam. <laughs> just a plain old Gundam. And I also like that you have the hip connector piece. This is another one of those, will anyone even pay attention? Probably not. Should be a pointy boy. Like that the starting backpack is the most sensible one really, and then do you immediately go into boom, kaboom, and hey, did you watch see the destiny territory? The hand. Oh, you're right, Dirk. It does look a bit like the new Gundam, but the new Gundam only has wings on one side. It's like you can barely tell the fucking difference. All right. So, but the actual important thing here is the colors, actually. See, so I don't think that... Oh, hey, I didn't know you could do this. You can elongate <laughs> the joints. Yeah. Long arm model. Can we make him taller? Yes. Haha. <laughs> How do you like me now? That is hilarious. I had hadn't actually noticed that. <laughs> but yeah, we should probably figure out some sort of more slightly more sensible design than that. As amusing as it is to make essentially a basketball player. Short legs and a long torso, you say. <laughs> Wide hips for that movement speed. Long shins for a better stride. I don't know, we probably want to keep the body stock since this is clearly the rammer model. Do I find it amusing to just ex extend the neck by a foot for no apparent reason? Right, now the second most important thing of all, what eye flare color are we going to be using? Also, I like that the game is just not looking at the eyes at all so we can't see it. But there we go. Picked up. Alright. Now we can paint the joints. And interesting enough, we can paint the hydraulic systems individually. Start put that on black for now, yeah, so that it's more visible. And then the the actual under armor connectors and then the hands. I 
And this, of course, is where you splurge for the master grade so that you can put LEDs inside it for that green glow. It's like those 19th action figures with glow in the dark action. Perfect. <laughs> and then we can just slap this guy on gunman. Look at this guy. Look at this guy right here. I'm pretty sure I have a gun plus this guy in my closet. <laughs> Yeah. This guy is pretty much perfect already. <laughs> Why even bother changing anything? Yeah, in a way, totally. It's a banshee with slightly different colors. Yeah, I'm thinking if we can change the color of the horns, maybe. Like, do we want gold horns to get the deep banshee look in there? I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. And then, of course, we have the wings, and I'm not sure. How the parts are aligned. Let's see here. Alright, we have the main parts, we have the clip ons, and then we have the sub wings, and we have the thrust nozzles. Oh, yeah, because all the colors are available for all of the parts so that we can go real crazy if we want to gold thrust nozzles yeah that seems to work decently that pairs with the horns also gold makes for less re resonance so the Nozzles will be more reliable. This guy looks like what the enemy ace gets to fly in the last three episodes. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this thing. Yeah, it looks alright. Looks alright. Now I suppose we should also rename it, because it can't be the Type 19 anymore, it needs to have a cooler name. So what do you think, folks? Swimp. I'm not so sure about that, Bartigripple. It doesn't really look like a swimp. Led's revenge. Who is this lead guy? And why does he want revenge on us?
Butter Gripple, Lurcopter, Durkus, Tarla, the Bulo Delta. But of course it has to be the Delta Bulu Mark 1. And now we travel on to see whether those weapons we made are actually useful at all. <laughs> Let's continue the story, because the story is stupid. Uh, the last thing that happened in the story that we have assisted a, another PMC known as the Valkyries with... Well, everything, because it, it turns out that everyone worldwide is getting wrecked by the Quarks, except for us, because we are so cool. So, now the Valkyries are sending us out on the most dangerous missions to handle... ...the biggest and baddest of the boys. I'm really looking forward to our melee weapon. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a bit bigger than I expected, but it's perfect in every way. Yeah. Yeah, this works fine. Yeah. Smack ya. Get out of my face. Let's activate the pig. And shoot type 2. Hey, you just stand over there, you Metal Gear Ray copy. While I shoot you to death. Perfect. It is a bit, almost a bit too big, this thing, isn't it? Yeah, the pig was a bit disappointing, actually. Ooh, what's this? A new story development. A void crystal. Hmm. I may have made a huge mistake. <laughs> Alright, it's this kind of bullshit. Well, that thing is in fa intact, all the enemies are invulnerable. Perfect. Thankfully, we have the ultimate weapon the very dumb bell. Launcher! Gotta deal with those guys, cause they are super annoying. Basically, anything that fires projectiles is extremely dangerous in this game because you have no iframes and pretty much everything the enemy fires have a tendency to explode when it hits. So, good luck getting out of the way. Stop shooting me! Alright, we have defeated the new game mechanic and we didn't take that much damage in the pro process either. Great. Let's reload the pig. Pig is fantastic. Best paint job ever. Oh hey, it's another void crystal, you guys. Who would have thought? Just stand here in the middle of the area and tank all the damage because there's no other way for us to deal with this. Do 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 do. Thank goodness I invested in the uh, siege frame upgrade so that I actually have enough hit points to do this. Because with an unupgraded frame, we would just have died. 
trying to do with that. I do like how completely unmatching all of our weapons are with the rest of the design because we look like the try hard grim dark mech and we're running around with a giant double dumbbell and just smacking things in the head. Ah, stop teleporting out of the way, little asshole. Accept your death like a man. These are no heartless lurk over. But these are the fearsome quarks. Don't ask me what the quarks actually are because it hasn't really been explained yet. They're just bad guys and we need to kill them. Huh. Apparently no one had particularly much hit points left. Good. This guy should close the door, it's gonna get real cold in there. Uh, yes, Buddy Gripple, the game does in fact have multiplayer. I haven't checked it out at all, because I think it's just arena fighting right now. But there are plans for things. Oh no, it's that one Pokemon. The name escapes me. And it's immune to damage. Is it a void crystal or is it just extra tough? Oh, it was just extra tough. Alright. Step one, get through the boss's shields. Before you do that, you will not do any damage. Then just shoot the boss with everything you have. And smack him. And take all the damage in the world. Oh dear, that is a big AoE. <laughs> For those of you who have not already noticed, health pickups are really rare in this game and they do not actually give you much health at all. And everything has giant AoEs and hits for a lot of damage. So get used to getting wrecked, because you will. God, I really want to kill you. Problem is that I have no hit stun and you just shoot your projectiles at me while I'm standing right next to you. <laughs> Which is sort of dangerous. Ah, the perfect Inferno gun got him. Oof! <laughs> oh no, thankfully you have three lives permission because the developers know that the game is not particularly well balanced right now. I'm basically holding off and even dealing with the boss until I'm taking care of all this trash. God, that AoE is huge. I don't even have enough boost fuel to get out of it in time.
Yes, keep firing over where I am not. That's great. on the ground so that missile launch was completely pointless. And now he has gone into immunity mode. Hmm. Apparently he has a void crystal inside of him or something? Oh and now it's arena attack. And he spawned one of those assholes. Great. Oh, and they're immune because he put down a Void Crystal. Uh, I can already tell that this is not going to be a fun fight. <laughs> hmm. The ads just disappeared. Alright. I don't mind. Now we are starting to run out of ammo, which is a very real risk in this game. Because enemies have a crap ton of hit points and you do not have enough ammo to deal with them. Oh, you're still immune, even though I destroyed the Void Crystal. Oh, there are two now! Okay! Difficulty level has gone up by about 200%, I feel. <laughs> so how do you like that projectile spam, folks? Guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. Now we're completely out of ranged weapons, which means that we have to get close to the boss, but all bosses have an instant melee attack that they do that does huge damage. So don't stand close to them, because you'll die. I really want to do this on one credit though. Let's see what we can do. I smack you! Whoa. Crap. If you're locked on a large target, you can't actually dodge properly because the, it tries to boost around the target instead of away from it, no matter what direction you're holding. Just another major flaw in the control system. Mmm, delicious. Give it to me. Mission Yum. Clear. Right, well, it took one credit. We did it! Yeah! We look super stupid. <laughs> Probably going to have to design a new melee weapon, guys. And yes, Lurkopter, everyone that shows up in this game is always standing and bouncing up and down, and I'll let you imagine why. You got the Titan Leg, yeah! And some materials, yeah! Wow, the rewards on this mission were terrible. Now it's time for the exciting story. Which if you ever read fanfiction by 14 year olds, you'll feel right at home.
The enemy lady is real, Durkus. All the people are real. Unfortunately. Let's see, does that mean that... Uh, oh. Okay. I guess that's another grinding mission, right? Yep, yeah, it's another hunting ground. They're not doing that. Oh, it's near. Near? Oh, Elenir. Oh, they just call her Nier. That's bullying. Don't do that. And our science girl, Quindolia. I do like that the name of your mass is on the hangar door. That is a neat detail. Tell us the secrets of Mole War, Pelonier. Very satisfied with the design that we have achieved, but we need to work on those weapons. So let's design a new weapon. All of a sudden there is a shock weapon here, but I haven't even unlocked shock weapons, so how does that work? Anyway. Let's figure out what grip to use. I do find it sort of interesting that I haven't found any of these things yet. We can make a combat lance. Boom. The biggest butter knife in history. 20.7 tons of spreading goodness. I like that it's supposed to be a scythe, but if you don't have the scythe specific handle, it just becomes a really big butter knife. I appreciate this. Weapon. 
Right, the pig was not as amusing as we thought it was. So let's see about making a different shoot gun. The light machine trigger. The tactical trigger. Boys love machine trigger. things here that I have almost unlocked but <laughs> not quite Maybe we should make a big one of these two. The Kinetic Buster. I'm gonna screw around a bit here with the colors, by the way. If anyone has any interesting ideas for how to paint this thing, do let me know.
Maybe it's time to try out one of the nukes as well while we're at it. Since we have unlocked the shielded warhead pod. Again, whatever that means. <laughs> oh, it has a really big screw on it. Perfect. Let's actually try and match this one a bit more to our actual MASS because so far we have sort of been behaving a bit oddly. And the nukes are made of gold. Very expensive. Perfect. Student development. Oh well. Well, the co op is coming at some point. Let's see, do we have the ability to develop anything? Odds are no, because as mentioned before, things are ludicrously expensive. <laughs> we have the resources, but not the cash for that one. Which uh, means I suspect that we don't have the cash for anything here either. We can move up towards the Enforcer. This is our next target right here. Problem is that this thing costs 14,000 credits and you get like 2,800 credits per mission. The economy is fucked up. <laughs> in this game. Let's get boat tempo preserved for 25% attack bonus after we hit an enemy with a melee weapon. Yeah. Neo-European, right next to Shelter 01. Where is Shelter 07? Oh yeah, that's right, it's somewhere in southern China. That's where the main character grew up, apparently. Let's see. Let's start from the beginning so that I can see if there are any weapon drops that I've missed. Because I really want to unlock as many just cool things as possible. Uh, England sunk by the grapple. It's gone. Don't ask him about it. Uh, here we go. Considerably bigger bangs for a buck this time. Alright. There we go, almost 17,000 damage in one combo. Neat. Now the funny thing is that despite this being the first mission, it actually has a boss. The very first mission throws a boss at you. 
And I remember that when I wasn't used to the controls and still haven't realized you need to desperately turn the auto lock off if you want to be able to play, it was actually sort of tricky. Because this game has a soft auto lock that just tags the closest enemy whenever you use a weapon and then the lock sticks. So if you're trying to run away or shooting at someone else, your mass is just turning 180 degrees and flailing in a different direction. It's not great. Thankfully, they added the option to turn that off. Large energy signature. Also, this is fun. I wanted to show this off. If you're in targeting mode, when a cutscene starts, you get the targeting overlay in the cutscene. This guy is sort of fun though, because he has a charge attack that does damage to his minions. So if you don't want to waste ammo, you can just lure him into killing everyone for you, and it's great. Like so. That's also hard knockdown on all the enemies that it hits, which is fantastic. Free damage. Activated his murder death rage mode. That was also where I learned that you do not use melee attacks against the bosses until you master their patterns. Because that four stomped. Those four stomps he did there, that's his response to you being anywhere near him. And with an unupgraded mass, that kills. Uh, yeah, Dorcas, that pretty much summarizes it neatly. I think this is a cool game, and it's a fun idea to just essentially give you a construction set for mechs, and then you throw them at some enemies. There is a lot of soul in this game. <laughs> And if they listen to the community and start ironing out the, all the parts that are very clearly teething issues or just misunderstanding how a action game is supposed to work, I think that it has the potential to actually get pretty good. Let's see here. All right, completing some shoulders, some triggers, some bodies. Recompleting the Drake unit, but I already have that. Some crappy materials that I can't use. Let's pop on over to Fusion Cells in the Snow in Neo European. These guys to become vulnerable. There we go. Something I do find a bit amusing is that if you add the two handed grip to a melee weapon, it just mysteriously gains more range than the physical model. You will hit things 
despite very clearly being nowhere near it. So the hitboxes on two-handed melee weapons are weird. But that's a player advantage, so I won't complain too much. Hey guys, catch these nukes! That shows another one of the weaknesses of the nuke type missile, that it can't lock on. You just press the button and it hits a bit in front of you, and if you haven't memorized the distance you will be missing a lot. Really, in general, I would just say use the swarm missiles at all times because they're just better. to actually defeat enemies by just hitting them with a the melee weapon. You start off so weak in this game that basically it feels like everything counts. Just a little bit extra damage goes a long way. for the mission and do 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 The shock absorb barrel. I think we already have that. Right. There's one more thing we I figured we can show off that you have multiple hangar slots, so you can have lots of these guys actually. Thirty two to be exact. And this is what the mask looks like if you take off all the armor parts. And interestingly enough, you don't need to have armor on it, it to go into battle. You can just get in there. And since everything is based more on your engine and architect and actual armor, this thing has the same hit points as the one with full armor on it. So I'm thinking... Maximum new type. A 
unlock the shock absorber. It just looks like a big old shotgun to me, but alright. Yeah, I mean, I can see the general concept of what you design not actually having an effect on your stats so that you can play with a master looks any way you want it. But the fact that it doesn't affect it at all and the fact that you can't tell your stats while you're building makes it so that you... I know I don't know it's difficult for me to keep track of whether or not I'm doing a good job basically Mission start You did not expect the naked knights Oh no an EMP mine <laughs> The dowser, that's pretty good. He's here in the desert looking for water. The interesting thing is that a lot of weapons have a forward dashing attack, the melee weapons, if they are the type that you would expect to have one, such as the spears and so on. It seems that the lances have one as well. Now on this mission you're supposed to be uh, defusing these EMP mines, which is a bit of a shit show, honestly. It is also a bit annoying because they're environmental hazards that only hurt you, since the quarks are naturally not electronic, they're organic. Get over here, yeah, we can't. Fun thing about this thing is that it is entirely possible to build your mass in such a way that you do not have enough fuel to get out of the damage zone when you activate the MP. And I'm not entirely sure it's possible to defuse them in that case. Let's see, where's the last one hiding? It doesn't actually become visible until you've activated it at least once. Have you ever run across a minefield hoping to find a mine? First time you're introduced to the Cerberuses, and you get two of them. Because why not? Double mid boss! Oh, and you still have the EMP mines in this area as well, while you're fighting the mid bosses, because why not?
Oh god, this is so much faster with upgrades. <laughs> Also, it is very clear that certain melee weapon combinations are just objectively better in every way. Alright, there we go. That's one mine. Let's run around until we find the others. Oh, there's one. Lance boxing was a famous Swedish martial art. Uh, no, I'm lying. All right, mine number four should be somewhere around here, maybe. Where are you at? Can't there be a little Achtung Minen sign somewhere? A being of pure energy, armed with big pointy nails and missile packs. He is the boss now. Mission end screen is pretty much the best one because it adds a little blurring effect to the make itself. Sorry, mass. Oh, we completed the Warhammer. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I read on the community forums that the double half to the hammer is pretty much the strongest weapon in the game. Oh, there's a great hammer too. Oh no. Let's start with this one. Yeah, there we go. The Gaveler. The Gundam Hammer. Oh, and I got both the underarm and the E and inverted trigger. Neat. I was thinking earlier this week of doing a lot of off-screen grinding to just get as many of these things unlocked as possible, but I just, I honestly could not be bothered. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit it, it's that week. See, the Claw Charge Buster, this looks nice. Yeah, nice. Get him. Make this baby out of gold. And of course, crackling blue energy.
Looks like an epic Destiny 2 drop. Let's see, I unlocked the Warhead pod, but I don't care about the Warhead pod. Have I unlocked the Warhead missile yet? No. <laughs> Darn it. Next up, the unexpected coordination. The first mission where you're cooperating with the Valkyries. I do like that you still have this one little tiny thruster built directly into your frame so that they can have the thruster effect. <laughs> I just like the idea of having a single little thrust vectoring nozzle flying despite the fact that you weigh 380 tons. Alright, over 500 damage per hit, you say? And the, all of the melee weapons have the same attack speed if they're on a two-handed grip, so... Just put the bigger damage on there, I guess. Back here, little fucker. That's right. Yeah, boxing hammers. Ah. <laughs> this looks like a pre-alpha build from a from the PS3 era. Just placeholder model trying out the basic weapons. Fire! Then you hammer away. Smack, smack, bang, whack. And then this guy spawns in and does damage because his appearance is an attack. I do like the shoot gunner though, it's got a good size to it. Can't escape, buddy. <laughs> Missiles are basically like when you throw the suitcase in the new Hitman game. They will hit, it just takes a while. <laughs> Let's 
Smacko. Yeah, I didn't even remotely hit you there, friend, but I'll take that kill. I honestly do feel that some basic hit stun would help this game a bit. Because the only thing that has hit stun on enemies if, is if you land a big melee hit. And since half the enemies in the game are flyers that shoot projectiles at you, it can, can be a bit difficult to get at them. Misairu. I also like when my character just decides to spin 180 degrees away from the enemy and start flailing at the air. <laughs> I killed him before the missiles arrived. How embarrassing. Power walking to victory. Armor, huh? Yeah, that's for cowards. I stripped my machine of all armor and painted it in bioluminescent pink so that the enemy would find me easier. That's what I like. Combat dual pole arm. Hello, there's a dual pole arm? Gonna have to unlock that. Let's see what that grip looks like. Oh, it's oh, it's not a twin, but oh, it, so it gets two heads. That is nice. I like that. There we go. Perfect. The compact trigger. Well, yes, looks really annoying to hold, honestly. All right. The needler launcher. Right, maybe we should actually do something with this guy. Maximum stretch.
Neo Sweden deploying to the battlefield. Give him a head because I feel that he deserves one. Strongest machine. Can we afford to develop anything? Let's see. We can get the charged engine, but I don't want that. I want the modified steel engine and then the lunarite. Ah, we can, however, get the improved neural OS. Wow. Can't quite afford the enforcer yet. I do like the idea of bonus armor and durability from metal platings to fight, despite the fact that we have nothing on this thing. It's like, where are you putting it? Oh well. Right, let's continue the storyline. Let's see here. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'm done? I'm not sure. Oh no, I might actually have finished the game. Hmm. Well then, I finished the game. <laughs> so let's do the Neo-European hunting ground and see if we have some cool weapons to unlock. And then we'll call it a night. looks a bit less dramatic when <laughs> oh no I'm about to miss my train ah oh, got my suitcases but I'm about to miss my train oh no ruffians trying to stop me from getting to the train station I'll have to punch them with my suitcases Oh god, it looks so much damage there. crystals. <sighs> the previous hunting mission had you choose when to spawn the enemies, but in this one it seems that everyone just pops in goes, hello, what are you up to? We're gonna kill you. From 
don't believe chaos, just the way I like it. Execution move. I also like that they basically have their entire goddamn air force here too. But hello, hello, hello. That's a lot of stuff to get here. That's a good one. When I told you guys earlier in the stream that uh, health items are rare, I wasn't kidding. Do note that throughout this mission not a single one has spawned. They do exist, because I have seen them. <laughs> but... I don't know. Coil block barrels, apparently. There are a lot of drops here that I apparently start getting here. But it's weird, because if this is the final level available in the current version of the game, I should have gotten at least parts of all the weapons, I think. But I haven't. Weird. Might be that they only drop on higher difficulty levels, perhaps. I'm mainly playing on easy because the, the higher difficulty levels just make it so that you get a bit more enemies and they have a lot more health, so everything t just takes longer to finish. That's not good stream material, like it takes me half the stream to finish a single mission. Boost punching through the entire group of enemies. Big flailing. It takes so much damage in this game. <laughs> Sixty six thousand damage at least. It's a fair bit of damage. Just a shame that it wasn't enough to beat even half the enemies. Ooh. 
Whoa, okay, what happened there? Camera decided to do his own little thing. Let's fight with this guy because he's the one that's furthest away. He doesn't have any friends, just like me. So apparently when those spiky dudes teleport, that teleport effect does damage. That's interesting. Might have been an off-screen projectile perhaps, but it certainly looked like I was hurt when he teleported. Yes, those are obviously the ones I'm trying to lock onto, not the enemy right in front of me. Thank you, game. Please let me lock onto that guy. Please die! How many times do I have to shoot you before you go down? There's the last guy. He's just what is he doing over there? Just spin <laughs> he's stuck in a rock. <laughs> Missile away. Gotcha. Mission clear. Yeah. Oh I got the katana blade. That's what I was looking for. Oh, the katana blade is a really rare drop. Darn it. But at least now I know where to get it. Oh, there's also a custom katana blade and of course a beam saber because why wouldn't there be? Alright, let's see. Did that in fact unlock a new mission? No, it didn't. Well, I guess that means that 8 missions is all the game has to offer right now. Which means that I have accidentally showed everyone the entire game. Oops. Well, 
Mass Builder, it's out on Steam in early access, and uh, there is one hell of a roadmap for content, including, as we have noted, both cooperative and player versus player multiplayer, so that's going to be great, I think, if they get it to work. I've had my 20 bucks worth of fun with this game, and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.